What's up everybody? That's right, Mr. Muscarella coming at you. And in this video, we are gonna take a look at finding the missing side of a right triangle when we're given an angle and one of the other sides. So what we're going to be taking a look at here in this particular example, check it out. We gotta find this missing side and round to the nearest tenth digit. Now, when we look at this problem, the very, very first thing you want to do is always identify where the angle is, because where that angle is, is going to be dependent on the trig ratio we're going to use to set up. Now, across from the 47, this side over here is the opposite side. Where the X is located, that is the adjacent side. So I want to think to myself, self, what trig function from sine, cosine, and tangent has to do with opposite and adjacent. And by golly, by gee, by George, that would be the tangent function. So when I set this up, my very first line is going to be to write down tangent of 47 degrees, because I know that's the angle that I'm given. And then the opposite side, of course, we know that to be 15. And the adjacent side is x. Now, when your variable is on the bottom, when your variable is on the bottom like that, I call this move the switch. So we're going to do two moves at once. So we're going to make it x equals. And then it's going to be 15 over tangent of 47. So that's what I call the switch. All right, so that is going to be the switch. Because what you essentially do is multiply both sides by x, and then you divide both sides by tangent of 47 in order to get that to be the way it is. All right, so that is going to be how we solve for x. Now, from here, it's just a matter of putting it in a graphing calculator or in Desmos. All right, so let's talk about the graphing calculator first. And when we do that, we're going to write x equals. So that x equals, we want to make sure because it's rounded. So we're going to do x is about. So we're going to use the approximate symbol, and then we'll go to our graphing calculator. So first thing on your graphing calculator, whatever calculator you're using, you want to hit the mode button because we want to double check that our function is in, our calculator is in degree mode. Now, bonus tip for you, pro tip right here, since we want to go to the tenths place, that's really cool on a graphing calculator because we can arrow over here to one, and that's how many decimal places after to the right of the decimal point that your calculator we go. So we can change float to one and that'll round it to the tens place. So if you want to go to the thousands place, you would arrow over to three. So just be aware that that's how you can use your graphing calculator to do that rounding for you. Or you could just leave it on float, your choice. But we're going there and we're gonna make this as easy as possible for us. So once we have that set up, our calculator set up correctly, we're going to go to the home screen. So I hit the second button and then mode. From here, now my trig function that I had to work with was tangent of 47. So I'm going to do 15. So a couple options here. Option number one, just type it straight across. So you're going to type in 1,5 divided by, and then tangent. So you're going to hit the tangent button and then our angle was 47. Now, since we're in degrees, we do not have to worry about hitting a degree symbol or anything like that. So we'll just simply type that in, boom, and we get 14.0. Now, if we wanted to make it look like a fraction, you're gonna hit this alpha key right here, and then Y equals. Now, if your operating system does not has not been updated, you will not see this menu, and that's how you know you need to update your operating system, your OS. So upgrade that junk show. Now, numerator denominator, if I type that in, so now it's gonna look like a fraction, and I would type in 15 on the top, and then tangent of 47 on the bottom. And then close that parentheses, oops, make sure you close it, don't make it a nine. Uh, and that, these are little things that are always driving you nuts with the technology, boom, and we get the same value. So we'd go back here and we would type in X is about, and yes, you need to add the decimal point and the zero. So 14.0 is about how much that would be because we're rounding to the tenths place. Now, if we were going to Desmos, so let's go ahead and open up a tab in Desmos, shall we? So over to Desmos, we go. Now in the Desmos graphing calculator, we would simply start to type in 15 divided by, now to spell tangent, you just start to type in the word tan and notice it'll change from italicized 
to that. And then we do parentheses and then 47. Now we get negative 120.455, like yo bro, that's like not even close. So what's going on with his jokes? Did I type it in correctly? Yeah, okay. So that means we've got to put Desmos into degree mode as well. So when you go to do that, you're gonna to have to go all the way over to the graphing calculators here. So with that, let's uh, go over all the way to the wrench. All right, so over on the wrench, you'll notice the default setting is going to be radians. So we'll make sure we hit degrees. And when we do that, whoo, lo and behold, let's check ourselves here. Look at that over this. Oh my gosh, that's so beautiful. We see 13.98, blah, blah, blah. So that will not round it for us. So we have to know that we're in when we're in Desmos, we gotta do the rounding for ourselves. All right, so that's one of those things that we wanna be weary of when we do that. So either way, whether you use Desmos or whether you use your graphing calculator, be sure you round to the appropriate decimal place. Now, another option to get tangent, if you don't wanna just type it out, because we're gonna be working with these later. Over here, you'll see these functions, and in the functions menu, when you hit that little keyboard and go to your functions, you'll see trig functions there at the top in the current version of Desmos. And we'll you can just hit the tan button right there. When we work with inverse trig functions, that's a little bit different. That's when we're trying to find how many degrees are in an angle. More on that later. All right, but that's it. When you, no matter which way you slice it or dice it, you would get the value of 14.0. Now, notice the check marks here. So when you set this up, that would be the point values for that. And then just to kind of reiterate real quick, like why does the switch work? So if you had tangent of 47, so let's gonna just kind of go through that real quick. So if you had tangent of 47 equals uh, 15 over X, and you times both sides by X, you'd get X tangent of 47 equals 15. But I wanna get that X by itself, bro. So then I would divide both sides by 10 47. So I'd get 15 over 10 47. So that's why I just do the switch, bro. I just take these two terms right here and when the X is on the bottom, boom, and that's all we got to do is the switch. All right, that's it for this one. Thank you guys for watching. Make it a great day as always. And I'll catch you later. Peace out, Cub Scout.